the worst beer bars on Bar Rescue. I like that I try to look good in some of my videos and then other times I'm just like, fuck it, guinea tea in a hat. That's why I get comments like, you should be on the gay Jersey Shore spinoff. I'm, I'm on All Star Shore, guys, and I am the gay one. <laughs> Very much so. That's why I know a bit about reality TV and since I've been a bartender for over a decade, I know shit about bartending. And I'm a bit of a bitch. That comes in handy too. <laughs> and apparently today we're gonna see how people fuck up beer, which is like the easiest thing for a bartender to, to give out. If you're lucky, you're just giving out a bottle. That's fine. But honestly, even draft, that's like basic shit. Learning how to pour a good draft beer. When you're pouring a draft beer, you literally just hold it under the spout, a little bit slanted, pour it, one, two, three, and you're done. You want a little bit of foam, to cap it off and that's about it. So I don't I don't really understand how people are really gonna fuck up beer unless they're just serving flat or skunked beer to people which if that's the case and the bar back doesn't know what they're doing or they're not readjusting their kegs or switching things out, I, I don't fucking know. We're gonna find out. Bar Rescue always fucking like throws me for a loop and shows me shit that I would have never thought of. There's been a horse in the bar. There's been raccoon shit in the bar. I don't fucking know what we're in store for today. But we haven't talked much about beer. So today maybe I could be a little informative. Maybe today I could give like actual critiques <laughs> instead of just sitting here screaming. But let's shut up and find out. Let's find out how these motherfuckers fuck up the easiest thing about bartending, which is giving out a fucking beer. It literally just has to be cold and not old. That's it, it even fucking rhymes. Be sure to follow me across all social media. You can find me everywhere at MikeMGTV. And without further fucking ado, Let's see what the fuck's going on on Bar Rescue. <laughs> I'm rhyming today. What this? Oh, I'm like Dr. fucking Seuss. Like, with an alcohol problem. <laughs> Let's get into the video. So here's what I wanted to do for my recon tonight. Because of this industrial area, I'm guessing they sell a lot of beer in there. So I got Mike and Tom from TurboTap to go in. TurboTap pours beer three times faster and increases yield by almost 30%. Oh, cool. They know Las Vegas. They know the competitive. He's throwing math at me. I don't understand any of that shit. I'm a bartender, goddammit, and a YouTuber. What makes you think I know shit about math percentages? That's how they trick you to make you like think that these people know what the fuck they're talking about. Throw out some percentages and some like big words and like, oh my god, they, they yeah, they, they must be great. <laughs> because I don't know what the fuck they're talking about, but sure. Mike works in West Hollywood with a bunch of hungry bottom twinks. So he throws out vodka sodas at 80% velocity. And, like, do you see what the fuck I'm talking about? Chris wrote me an emotional letter expressing the problems with the bar. But look at him. He's sitting on his ass. Mitch is over here washing dishes. He's sitting outside drinking and smoking. He should be ashamed of himself. Why is it always like the people who come at you with the most like need for help? Like, please help me tell me what's going on with my bar, like, why is my business failing? Because you're not doing anything. Like these people are just whiny because they want you to do all the work for them because obviously they don't know how to work. <laughs> it's, it's the common denominator in every fucking video that I review and I'm getting sick of it. It's you, hi, you're the problem, it's you. Got me quoting fucking Taylor Swift. God damn it. <laughs> That's the wrong way to do it, Guinness. That glass should be on a 45 degree angle. Yeah. Let's see what Michael says about this, Guinness. You don't gotta worry about what Michael says because Michael already told you. You never just pour it straight down. That's gonna cause too much foam. What did I say? Sideways, bitch. I love how I already said the fucking solution before I even saw the fucking video. I'm getting fucking psychic. Or I'm just getting too repetitive <laughs> reacting to Bar Rescue. But you guys fucking love it and I love doing it. Bar Rescue is like that good leg. You just keep going back because it's so good every time. <laughs> I gotta wait for it to cascade. It's bitter because he gave it to me too early. What's happening is she did it that way. It removes some of the carbonation from the beer and it's not as good. I'll tell you what, my beer is just warm. You know, when beer is warm. Oh, it removed the carbonate. I thought it added the carbonation. And it's warm. How is it warm? There's, there's two things. Make sure it's not flat and make sure it's not warm. It's two things. So I'm gonna fill this up. I can see already, look at that. When beer is warm, it foams, and then we get about a 50 or 60% yield out of a keg. It either means that it's warm or that the keg is tapped. When it's coming out like that, that means you have to change the keg. 
Or apparently it's too warm. I don't fucking know. I wasn't a bar back doing the back end shit. I was just pouring and serving the shit. But I know that that's wrong just looking at it. For beer lovers, foam or head is paramount in creating the appeal of beer. And head is paramount no matter what, bitch. <laughs> you fuck up the head. That's dark. That's that's what, that's basic. When you fuck up the head, that's how you know the rest of it's gonna be shit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Foam not only looks great, it informs how the beer will smell and therefore taste. The human nose has much more sensory perception than the tongue, so the aroma given off by the head is where most of the beer's flavor exists. How yeah, you... I was about to say something that was apparent. What's going on outside? In this neighborhood, uh-huh. I was gonna say, good head? Am I not allowed to talk about head in West Hollywood? <laughs> Good head is gonna let you know how the rest of it is gonna go. Same goes for beer. And they're right about the nose adding to the whole experience, even with head, because you want a little bit of musk, you know what I mean? It adds to the whole sensation when you're going down there, because you know that little space between the thigh and the balls, that good musk, but you don't want it to be BO, but you don't want it to be too clean. Am I going off track here? The ladies and gays know what I'm talking about. Straight guys, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Let's talk more about beer, bro. <laughs> Down to 43 was as low as it went. Yeah. So we're dumping foam all day long because of the temperature back there. We got to fix that, guys. We got a serious problem. So, Becky, I want you to come back here and pour me a Guinness. Oh, my God. We got Becky going back there. And we've been talking about science. Oh, my God. I'm not a... She's, a, she's not a cosmetologist. How is she going to fucking know about head? <laughs> and who the fuck has a thermometer when they're bartending? Just like, if it's too foamy, you got a problem. If it's too flat, you got a problem. Figure... Someone's got to figure out the temperature in the back because don't leave that up to me with a thermometer Someone puts a thermometer in my beer. I I'm leaving <laughs> Imagine getting a shitty beer and the bartender's like hold on. Let me get my fucking thermometer puts it in I would be like what the fuck is going on here on this day? Now that is exactly how you do not pour a Guinness. Now there are six steps to pouring a perfect pint. She's breaking every rule that there is. You're gonna put it right under the tap at a 45 degree angle. I'm not doing this explanation again. We already said it's a slant and you fucking pour it. Becky obviously has never been trained a day in her life. She's a hot girl with tits. Yeah, she got tits. She's a skinny girl with tits. Bitch, you better work. Are those real? <laughs> this is where bars fuck up. They hire hot girls with tits with no experience and then they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Same shit happens sometimes in West Hollywood. They hire a hot guy with abs who don't know what the fuck they're doing. But for the most part, they have to because it's very competitive to get jobs out here. So you can't just have abs, even though it is part of the hiring process and it may not be right, but you also have to know how to make a fucking cocktail. Every bar I've got hired at has asked me to submit a headshot, which is very, very weird, pick up my shirt so they could objectify my body. And then they asked me how to pour a beer, how to make a Cosmo and how to make a margarita. They had to know that you had both things, okay? God had to give with both hands okay, for this to work out. As you pour your Guinness, you're going to straighten the glass out. And you're gonna want that beer to come up right to the top of the heart. We call that the crest. You're gonna set it down, and we're gonna let it cascade. The nitrogen releasing flavors and aromas. Guinness drinkers are incredibly loyal. It's important, guys, that we do this right. Now we keep it flat. He is right about that. I didn't point that out. Not only do you have to be slanted, as it fills up, you gotta straighten it out, okay? Once it gets the preferred amount of foam, that's when you straighten it out. Because you want it to be good, and you want it to smell good, apparently, because we're talking about smells. Because he is right that beer people know their shit about beer, okay? If there's one type of drinker that knows their shit, it's beer people, okay? Sit with a hipster and bring up the topic of IPA beer. You're gonna be busy for three years. Here we have hops, a natural muscle relaxer. So if you say I wanna go have a beer and relax, you're actually telling the truth. Cause beer will actually help relax you. Oh my God, I need to come out with a beer called Poppers. No one steal that. That's a great idea. Oh my God, a gay beer called Poppers cause it has hops. Bitch, I better work. I'm so excited to actually learn things about beer. Instead of people schooling you all the time, you know, you kind of have something to tell them. How does she not know anything? Like, I at least know shit about, like, I cops. Like, IPA has more hops. That's some basic shit that I learned. I hope that that's right. Otherwise, you guys are going to make fun of me in the comments. But if you're working at a beer bar, this is some shit that needs to be taught to you beforehand. For example, y'all know I know nothing about wine. I worked at a fancy 
French restaurant, a wine bar, bitch. I worked at a wine bar in Manhattan on Prince Street called Little Prince. It was very, very fun. And in the beginning, when I was trained, they kept me after to taste every single wine that was available. So I knew the flavors to talk about and all the qualities of each wine to talk about when serving it because people are going to ask those questions because that shit matters to people, believe it or not. Me, I'm just like, will this get me drunk? Do not want to have your nozzle in the beer. Bam, the stress got to them. They kept forgetting things. I don't like that they have to turn around to go to the beer spouts. One thing that I love that a bar has when I'm working, especially for beer, is having the beer spouts on the bar. A, so you could show people what you're doing, and also for speed, because you don't have to waste time turning around, walking to the spouts, doing all that shit. You could just do it right there in your workspace. The layout of this is gonna slow them the fuck down. And also, just for customer service, it's always nicer when you don't have to turn your back to the customer. Just a little thing I wanna point out. Chris was completely in the way tonight. I would have three beers lined up that needed to cascade, so I'd turn around, he would just take them. He was doing more harm than he was doing good. Shoot. He just took a whole bunch of them over to the corner over here. Do you see in the corner? See, there's not doing anything, and then there's micromanaging to the point where you're in the way. Bar owners or bar managers, whoever the fuck. Bartenders need space to work. Don't fuck up my feng shui, okay? Everything I'm doing has a purpose. Apparently like letting the beer cascade, which is something I've never had to do. But then again, I've never worked with Guinness. I also personally don't like Guinness. I like a light beer. <laughs> a good Allagash. You know what I'm talking about? You're not even pronouncing them correctly. Without a commitment to quality, you're not gonna succeed. What is the name of that beer? Read it. Tim Kelly. It's not Ken Kelly, read it. Kill Kenny. Kill Kenny. Say it ten times. Kill Kenny. Kill Kenny. Kill Kenny. Kill Kenny. You can't even say the name. Mama. You can't even say the name of the thing you're serving. Fuck training. They never even talked about their products. Like, what the fuck? That could have been fixed in one conversation if they've ever had it before. They can't even say the name of the beer. There's nothing worse in a bar than warm beer. Foam everywhere. I need to figure out what the hell is going on here. That's why I'm confused about the whole cascading process. This is something that I know nothing about, but the idea of letting the beer sit is gonna get confusing to me because then they have to know which beer has been sitting longer than others so that they don't fuck that up and serve people beer that's flatter than it should be or beer that's warm because it's been sitting out longer than it should be. Oh, so they keep a pitcher of water next to the tapper to rinse the foam. So they wow. spat the foam. It's Status quo, I guess. And there's Jim. He doesn't see the beer going down the drain. He doesn't see anything. Instead of fixing the problem of why the beer is coming out too foamy, which I've already talked about, it's either too old, too warm, the keg needs to be changed, or the spout needs to be changed because maybe that's fucking dirty, they're just pouring it down the drain with water, which is what? Wasting product. So these people are just knowingly wasting money instead of fixing the problem. Problem, prob, problem, bitch, I'm so, I love when I get like so shocked about something because it's so fucking stupid, I can't even talk and then I sound stupid. It's contagiously stupid. Oh my God. We got a squirter. It was my father, it just was like foamy and that's why you need to pay attention because if you would've done that properly, you wouldn't have sprayed every word, it wouldn't be an issue. You wouldn't be covered in beers, they wouldn't be covered in beer. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. If they could quit bickering, they would- Also, why is this happening at the bar? This should be happening in the back. Their connection should be in the back, not at the bar for everybody to see when you fuck up. The layout of the- I don't know- I've never had to work in these conditions. Does this happen a lot? Because to me, that's fucking stupid. I'm all for when you fuck up, hide it, lie. Make people not know about it so they think that everything's fine. You can't do that when it's out on display. <laughs> I can smell the pine salt. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Okay, bitch, calm down. This girl, I've seen her in these videos before and she dumb pisses me off. At least they wiped it down for you. You know what I mean? That's like, there's nothing wrong with that. They cleaned the bar for you and she's like, oh, I can smell the pine salt. Fuck off. Would you rather a sticky surface? Surface, surface, contagiously stupid. My, the guys that come in here call it the 
chemical because we don't even know. I don't even know what that cleaner is. Really? It's like one of those bulk cleaners, so we put it in a spray bottle that's just like this. Bitch, shut up. Bitch, shut up. Don't. What did I say? Lie. Lie. Lie till they think everything's fine. <laughs> the pitcher she's pouring is all gone right now. Oh, wow. It's beer. We're not reinventing the wheel here, John. Uh, but that beer can cost eight to twenty cents an ounce. And they're gonna let it sit there to let the foam go down before they add more, which is gonna make the beer flat and gonna fuck it all up before you even add more. No, stupid. Also, th don't do pitchers. Why are you doing those giant pitchers to try to make it faster? You're actually just slowing yourself down when you can just pour a pint and move on. Even if you're serving a pitcher, I think that's dumb. I think it's dumb to order a pitcher for your table so you could serve yourself because that pitcher is gonna sit there and the beer in it that you're not drinking yet is going to get flat and get more fucked up. Just order a fucking pint, this is stupid. His back is to the bar. He's oblivious to what's going on. His bar is hemorrhaging money and he's got a Kool-Aid smile. You know, this guy does not know the economics of beer. I'm gonna teach him. I think this guy just doesn't know what the fuck is going on because he's not alert. But how do you not know, how do you not see that? How do the bartenders not bring that up? How do the bartenders not tell somebody that that's happening to fix the problem? When that's happening, you gotta tell the bar back or tell the bar manager and fix that shit because that's nasty and disgusting and it's gonna fuck up everything throughout the entire night. The lack of communication is going to make me have an aneurysm. Give me a pitcher of beer. And a bunch of glasses. Oh, of course. One down. Keep going. Let's go. Oh, she got fucked. She's nervous. But that right there fucks up everything because now there's broken glass. Y'all know when there's broken glass, I've talked about this before, you got to stop everything because it's a fucking hazard and you got to clean that shit. Oh, poor girl. She shouldn't be bartending or in a bar, period. Look at her. She looks too young. Have we ID'd the bartender? Which is something you need to do. I'm not gonna say where I was, but I, I've, I've bartended in places when I shouldn't have even been in a bar before, but that's just me living my fucking life. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going now, Jim. Let's keep going. We're really making. Change the beer. Change the spout. Clean it prop. Honestly, it's probably because it's not clean. Honestly, I'm gonna guess that that's what the fuck's going on. And I don't even know this shit. You guys are making me realize that I know shit that I didn't even think I knew. That fuck, you're making me realize that I'm the smart one. <laughs> Everyone's surprised. Come on, Jim, keep pouring it. Okay. There's about three and a half glasses of beer in that pitcher. How many glasses are here? One, two, three, four and a half. Okay. But when those all become actual beer, it's probably about like two tops because that beer is gonna, you know, you all know what I'm talking about. The beer's gotta go down. It's, it may be like five glasses of foam, but that doesn't mean that it's five glasses of wasted beer. It is a lot of bad product wasted though. I, why do I keep talking like this? I don't, the gay hands are coming out today. Does anybody here want to drink this really? Is this not the worst beer you've ever seen in your life? If there's something in your own establishment that you don't like or wouldn't drink, why wouldn't you fix it? Why would you continue to serve that to people and then be fucking confused when shit's not going right for your business? I don't understand. Because your beer sucks, right? For the most part, yeah. And you know that. Yeah. But you'll let him drink it, but you won't. Well, yes. How do you feel when you dump beer down a drain all night long? Do you ever feel like an idiot? Oh, obviously. Yeah. And then it overflows the foam. The thing is, he's not an idiot. He knows the problem. He's just not solving it. He knows it's bad. And it's th there's no way he doesn't know how to fix it. He's just not fixing it. This is just lazy. <laughs> Y'all know I hate that shit. So you stupid or lazy? Both. It, it, they didn't answer it. I'm gonna let you know here right now. It's both. Okay. <laughs> Stupid for literally putting himself in this situation and lazy because everyone knows how to fix that problem and he just didn't. <laughs> but then he wanted to go to bar rescue and be screamed out in front of everybody. I don't even know what to fucking say. Hi guys. What's up, man? What's going on? How are you? Yeah, can I get a bud? And how about you? I have a bud light. Whoa. What kind of pouring is he doing? First of all, plastic cups, I'm gonna fucking scream. Also, Bud Light, 
I don't even wanna fucking talk about them because the whole shit going on right now with what's her name? The beautiful trans person on TikTok, Dylan, Dylan. Dylan had a, that amazing campaign and then all the fucking people got fucking pissy about a trans person having a campaign with Bud Light and then Bud Light apparently took it off and did some bullshit. Fuck Bud Light. And that kills me to say because I fucking love Bud Light. The older I get, the things I love become destroyed and toxic. I got Bud Light, I got Harry Potter, all this shit becoming terrible because of the people that run it. Stop! My favorite pastimes all becoming fucking transphobic. I will not stand for it! She's hot. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, what do you think? Here's a little, uh, flat, maybe? How can you succeed pouring a bad beer in St. Louis? This is the home of Budweiser. That's an embarrassment. And the plastic cups are not helping. The plastic cups not only are going to probably make it foamier because I don't know, I don't know the science, I don't know what happens, but somehow plastic cups, the beer is foamier every time. Don't know why. It also makes it warm up faster because your hand is holding the plastic, which warms it up. And it doesn't have the condenser of glass. I'm trying to be scientific right now. I don't know, somehow beer in a glass is much better than beer in fucking plastic. And you're in a fucking establishment, not in a frat tailgate. First thing you want to start with is a beer clean glass. That will allow the beer to give you a nice, even one inch standing head. What did I say? The first thing they say is, hey, maybe we need glass. Stop being cheap pieces of shit. Start from the bottom of the tap handle, not the top. You want to hold your glass at a 30 degree angle. You do not want to touch the nozzle. And as the beer fills, you're going to slowly straighten the glass. You see how it's the same thing over and over again? It's like the same, the fact that there's bartenders that never learned this, were never told this, or instructed by it, or were like, when they saw, when the manager saw them doing it wrong, did it inform them? Like, the fact that there's bartenders that don't know how to pour a beer is asinine to me. I know children that know how to pour a beer for their dads, not for themselves, calm down. But like, you don't need to know how to pour, like, Everyone in a, in high school knows how to pour a beer. When you take it from the can and you pour, I'm not condoning, I'm not condoning underage drinking. Hold on, let me change this. Anyone who has been at a party where they poured a beer into a cup from a can, you, everyone knows you do it sideways, right? That's like, that's something we know. Let me know in the comments if y'all didn't know that. I want to do an experiment. Do people like not know this? Because we all, this has been, I knew this before I was a bartender. Like this is common knowledge for not even bartenders. I don't understand how this happens. With a proper pour, you should be at exactly one inch. That serves many purposes. The first thing is aromatics. It opens up the smell of the beer. It's also for profit as well, because that foam is approximately 25% beer. Now we're gonna see how you do it. See, there was a bunch of math there. When I learned how to do it, I was told because it's pretty. I didn't need to know the signs. I was like, you're right, it is pretty. Work, I'll make sure to do that. <laughs> one inch of foam, work. She's not ready for the run win, that's just one inch of foam, ladies. We gotta fix it, mm, -mm. <laughs> I love working in gay bars, man. So much more fun. Oh, come on, Way too much head. Do it again. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Two drinks. Hey, you're gonna be broke before you make anything at this race. This is the only time you're ever gonna hear anybody complain about way too much. Uh, stop, stop with the head. Stop with the head jokes, Mike. I can appreciate that you wanna help, but right now you're just in the way, kid. We either gotta get them right or get out of here. Where's Kim's bucket? I'll get out. No bucket for Kim? This is beer you could be drinking. Well, what do you want me to do? Just walk around and see if you can help people. How's Kim doing? She doesn't want Get out of the way until you know what you're doing. Otherwise, walk around and do other things that bar managers do. T check on customers. Make sure things are proper temperature. Make sure things are clean. What do you want me to do? Not the wrong thing, okay? Don't do the thing you don't know how to do. Do anything else. This is why bar managers should have been bartenders first. Bar owners should have worked in the service industry. I, I, I stand by that. You should be a bar back before you're a bartender. You should be a bartender before you're a bar manager. And then when you know all that shit and know how to run it and do everything properly inside the establishment, then you should own a fucking bar. Otherwise you're just in the way and don't know what the fuck you're doing and end up on bar rescue asking stupid fucking questions. The glass itself wasn't in beer clean ready. It is a good quality beer, but if it's served like this, you're getting a suboptimal experience. Okay, uh, Tina, this glass a wasn't drink. properly cleaned. We need a new one. That's not Tina's fault. That's the barback's fault. 
Are you washing your shit properly? Is this tedious? Because this is tedious shit. Is there people to make sure that this is going to happen properly? Because the bartender's not going to know if the beer is bar beer clean ready, whatever the fuck. When I'm bartending and I get a glass, as long as it looks clean, I'm gonna assume it's clean because it came out and I'm gonna assume that the other person did their job. Whose job is that? Are we delegating jobs properly to make sure that everything runs smoothly? This is beer. This is beer that's making me freak out this much. Beer. How many beers do you actually have? I believe uh, I've had this car. You weren't even asked the names. You just asked how many. Like how... Michael, you have to understand that other people didn't have to go through what you went through. Other people didn't have to train like you did. Maybe in some parts of the world this is okay. S breathe. Breathe. I will never understand places that don't even train or have like no process in understanding how to be behind a bar or answer questions for customers. I had to take extreme tests. Like, at the Abbey, I had to memorize over 300 cocktails down to exactly what type of each liquor was in it, and the measurement, and the garnish, and the glass. Like, I, you weren't even asked how to make a cocktail. How many beers? You're right there every day. You're at that bar every fucking day, and you don't know how many fucking beers. You didn't pour the beer correctly because it has no head on it. Most of the flavor comes from the head of a beer, but the glass is so dirty that the head wouldn't formulate in the first place. So let's see if you can pour me one correctly. Try it again. Wow. He's like, wow, okay. I hope he knows what's going on. I hope he knows who John is because if a customer ever said that to me, I would be such a bitch back, even if I was fucking up. I was, I'm not gonna like stand here and be like, yeah, you know, everything he said was right because it was. But even if I fuck up and a customer just schooled me like that in front of everybody, oh, I'd be such a cunt. <laughs> and that's why I'm not the best person to work in the service industry. I was a good bartender, just not a good person. And that's why they put me on reality TV to be a bitch. Oh my God. My first beer in there was really nasty and bitter. It was kind of a no-win situation in the liquor department there. Something has to be wrong with their draft beer system. Neil Witty. I want to know what kind of beer that she ordered so I could come up with maybe why it was like that. On TV shows like this, when I just get, when I see that kind of reaction for a beer, like I drank skunked beer, bitch, and I never had that reaction before. So part of me thinks that might have just been like a TV moment because there wasn't any like information given. I'm gonna just point that out. Let's see what you get out. Got some brown stuff on that one there. And you and can this smell is it. symptomatic of the lines not being cleaned. Every beer distributor cleans their lines where their beer is at. Do you know when your lines were cleaned last? They were cleaned Monday. They were cleaned Monday. Bullshit, they were cleaned Monday. Did you see the fucking scum that came out of that shit? What did I say before? Another reason why it's probably coming out disgusting is because it's not clean. I literally said that, I'm smarter than I thought I was. Bitch, I love when that happens on the show. <laughs> That's side work. At the end of every shift, you have to clean the beer nozzles. Clean them, plug them, cover them so that there's no bugs or fruit flies that get attracted to it. Like, this is why this is happening. This is basic stuff and it's disgusting. Look at that, that's mold. White, bloomy mold. All that stuff's going right into your beer lines. Is it okay, maybe she wasn't over-exaggerating gagging. That's fucking disgust. This is the... They don't have a cleaning service. Every bar should have a cleaning service because honestly, there's only so much that side work can do. Every good bar that I've worked at had a cleaning service that it deep cleaned it every day to make sure that shit like this does not happen because it's fucking disgusting. Welcome to the Los Angeles Brewing Company. Let's get this going. If I ever had to do a stress test and all I had to do was beer, bitch, I would scream for happiness. It's beer. It's the easiest thing. Imagine when it's intricate cocktails. That's fucking tedious and annoying. A stress test of just beer? Oh, I would bang that shit out. That's what you hope for. That's what you wish for. That's how you... Th th this crowd, sometimes I give them like 
a little bit of padding when I see crowds like this, especially if they're making cocktails. Bitch, when it's beer, I would be handing out that shit so fucking fast there wouldn't even be a line. There's no excuse. There is no excuse when it comes to beer. One by one, all the beers are, are slowing down and stopping. The line has stuff too. Now, what's my dream? Still waiting for our drinks. Wait, it's happening for all the beers? Are they running out of all the... What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? We can't serve this beer. Okay. All right, guys. Sorry, I can't. I can't serve the beer that we have right now. How is this happening at a beer place? And and when it, whatever is happening right now, with whatever the fuck's going on with pressure, how are they not ready for this? Like God forbid. God, like, is this a beer place? Has this never happened before? Wait. <laughs> Do you have a backup tank? We've been running on this entry with a backup. So when you use the backup, what are you supposed to do? Get another backup, right? How am I supposed to know it's gonna run out? It hasn't You're run supposed out to time. look! That's why there's gauges! So do you realize- When you use the backup, you get another backup, so it's the back- I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I feel like SpongeGar. <laughs> like what? When you use the backup, guess what? You don't have a backup. How am I supposed to know that we were gonna? You just need to be prepared because you're in you're in a fucking bar. You're a business. I need to stop. I need to stop. I need to stop right here because <laughs> there's nothing else to say. We went over all the ways to fix the beer. This is just being stupid and lazy now. Oh my god! In the comments down below, let me know what your favorite beer is. I'm actually interested in that. Mine is an Allagash. I like a light beer. Also, let me know. Do you know how to pour a beer? I'm curious about this. Whether you know shit about bartending or not, I just want to know. Do you? Did do, who here knows that hold the cup at that angle? The most basic of basic shit. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe for future ones. I put them out weekly, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but sometimes I'm late, just like your mom. Special shout out to everybody over on Patreon, especially the regulars and barflies who help make this channel possible. And special shout out to this person over on Twitter. If you would like a special shout out in one of my videos, be sure to retweet them when they come out. And that's it, guys. I need to have a fucking beer. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike MGTV, and you are fucking welcome. Bye bye.